Imagine if you could get all the things that you wanted in life simply by imagining them happening to you. Well, you probably can't, at least not just by doing that, but imagining, visualizing, or as is often called in the world of elite sports and Olympic athletics, mental imagery or mental rehearsal, or as I would call it before I realized that what I was doing actually had a name and was proven by science, planning could be part of the equation to get what you want, a very important part, one that has been used for decades by people across different fields. So let's talk about that. So this is one of my journals from this one from 2019 and I found it the other day as I was doing or going through some drawers and in here I have written down some of the things that I want to happen in my life in the upcoming years and reading it made me realize how much of that has now happened. Now is it all merely a coincidence or is the art of visualization to be credited? And what even is visualization besides a word that I'm having difficulty pronouncing? Well, it's about a lot more than just writing things down. First, I dream of my painting and then I paint my dream, said Van Gogh. Imagination is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known, wrote Napoleon Hill. So put simply, visualization is when we create a vivid mental image of an event that we want happen, preferably using our five major senses for the purpose of well, it depends. So in the case of athletes, they seem to use um, mental imagery to, for example, enhance performance at the cognitive, behavioral, and emotional levels, as one paper said, as well as improving motivation and coordination and concentration. And it may also be useful in reducing anxiety and fear while boosting self-confidence. Every night I visualize myself winning the Olympics. I picture myself bombing the girl in the final and standing on top of the podium and watching the flag go up and feeling the gold medal go around my neck and hugging my coach. I visualize that every night, said Kayla Harrison, an Olympic athlete in mixed martial arts. If you can see yourself hitting a dive, the chances of you hitting a dive increase greatly said Troy DeMay, a four-time Olympian diver. So the above are examples of when visualization is used when you already have a foot in the door. You know, you're already playing in the game, your spot there is guaranteed, it's just that the victory is not. But how about when we don't have a foot in the door? You know, when you're here and you want to be there and we don't even really know how we will get there now. I would like to share with you how I personally use visualization. And look, it may sound super silly to some, and it sure does sound super silly to me as well sometimes, but that's fine. I don't mind sounding super silly. And later we're going to talk about what the purpose of doing all this is and how it's actually worked in my favor. So let's take the example of wanting to live in a specific city or neighborhood. So what I would do is I would look up photos of that place. I will collect them and I will imagine myself waking up in that home, my new home. And I will imagine the morning light. Is it a quiet street or is it a busy one? And I'll imagine myself walking through the streets and getting my morning beverage at the local cafe and I will search for the closest grocery stores and look up restaurants that I think that I would enjoy 
and I'll try to bring the feeling of being there and living there and going about my day to day to life and I'll revisit that image as often as I feel like I need to to keep it alive. Now let's take another example where let's say I want a job at a specific company and so I visualize what having that job would feel like. So I'm opening the doors to the office. I'm wearing perfectly fitted pants and a white shirt. I have a coffee in my left hand and my laptop in my right one. And I feel absolutely fabulous. And as I get inside, I greet everyone. You know, hey Joe, how was your weekend? Oh, hey Catherine, how are your kids' piano lessons going? I can't wait to hear all about it on the lunch break. And as I'm visualizing, I'll sometimes have music on that puts me in the right mood. You all know that I love the song, Raindrops Falling on My Head. And then when I go to sit down at my desk with a big window with a view over the city, I take a moment to appreciate the fact that I'm sitting there at my dream job and I smile and I can feel the temperature in the room, I can smell the coffee aroma as everyone is getting their first morning cup, I can hear the phones going off in the background as clients are making calls and I can hear the clicking sound of the printing machine and the smell of freshly printed paper. So essentially, I will play the scenario in my head like a movie and I will make sure to have fun with it. Now, what's the purpose of all of this other than the satisfying feeling that we get when we're, you know, planning for the future and daydreaming about the things that we want in life? Is it merely a form of escapism or entertainment perhaps? Personally, I get at least four things out of it, besides it being very entertaining. Number one, it helps with hearing my inner voice. So as I visualize, I pay attention to how it makes me feel. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? And sometimes the answer is no. You know, I may not feel happy at all by those thoughts. Other times it feels great and the mere thought of the scenario makes me smiley and giggly. Secondly, it gets me excited and motivates me to pursue whatever it is that I want to pursue. It's like when you plan to travel somewhere and I used to always do this as a kid. Actually, I still always do this. So I will look up photos of the destination that I'm going to and I'll imagine what that vacation will be like and feel like and I would imagine packing and going to the airport and flying and it got me super excited. You know, it made the days leading up to the vacation so much fun because in the back of my mind, I had this picture painted of what was waiting for me. Thirdly, it helps me spot opportunities. So it's my belief that once you know what you want, you will be able to spot opportunities that can get you closer to that thing more vividly. So to put this in perspective, imagine that you plan on building something. Okay, you want to build a motorcycle and you have all the details in mind for what you want, but you have no idea how to go about it. However, because you have visualized it, you will now subconsciously notice more things that have to do with motorcycles. Like if someone mentions a motorcycle in a conversation, you will probably be more inclined to take the opportunity to ask them questions, you know, related to building one. And you're more likely to notice motorcycles in movies and draw inspiration from that. So essentially, once you plant a seed of something that you want in your mind, you will subconsciously look for ways in which you can water it and make it grow. 
And finally, I use it to plan backwards. So once I'm able to visualize an outcome, I'm able to design a mental roadmap to get to that point. So let's go back to the example of wanting to live in a specific um, neighborhood. So planning backwards could look something like, okay, I want to buy an apartment in, I don't know, Copenhagen. And to get there, I will need a mortgage and I will need a down payment. And to get that, I would need to keep saving money, but I will also probably need to get a raise or start a side hustle. And to get a raise, I would need to negotiate. And to negotiate, I would need to learn how to, and to do that, I would have to read a book on negotiation or talk to someone who is a pro negotiator. Now that's not to say that any of these steps are easy. It's simply just laying them out. And I'm literally just pulling this example out of nowhere, but hopefully you get the point of what I'm trying to say here. God helps those who help themselves. Religious or not, many of us are familiar with that phrase. Visualization does not guarantee success by any means. And this is the final point that I would like to make. So we can do all the planning and imagining and visualization that we want. But as Jim Carrey said in his 1997 interview with Oprah, he said that visualization works if you work hard. That's the thing. You can't just visualize and go and eat a sandwich. <laughs>